Assalamu alaikum. Have a good day. Welcome to Financial Management Learning. We are going to discuss Cetics, Corporate Governance and Business Class. We are in Corporate Governance domain. Now it is Module 12. It is the part of Corporate Governance. It is the continuation of previous modules. Today we will discuss the interaction of corporate governance, ethics and laws and the developments of corporate governance internationally that is only UK, Europe, South Africa and USA. Ethical and moral behavior is very often codified and therefore legally bindings. So if you see the law and ethics, if we compare it, then we'll see that ethical and moral behavior is very often defined and therefore legally binding. This occurs where the ethical position is so important, it must be protected by the force of law. For example, in society, believes it is ethically wrong for those who commit crimes and to profit from their illegal action. The money lender, the procedures of the crime and to lend any money, the proceeds of crime, we know it. In other words, making illegal gains appear is crime. And a money laundering is also the proceeds of crime. And the rules is to insider dealing, where those who possess inside information, that means insider trading about a company, and who gain to the sale or purchase of a share while using the information, is another example is the crime. Society believes it is unfair for those lucky individuals will inside the knowledge to take advantage of their position at the expense of others. For example, listed companies price sensitive information. If you use one before disseminating the information and making the money, then it would be the crime. So it is the unfair means also. So it's come to the ethics and laws, uh, difference in balance here. So you look here, the law and the corporate governance, the law provides the structure of the internal regulation of companies, such as the duty of directs to the open about their dealings and they also provide the mechanism of control. For example, the ability to shareholders to dismiss the directors and to the exercise control of the company, those the articles and meetings. This is the law also. So the main legal regulation that often companies are as follows in our country, Bangladesh, our main laws are companies at 1994 and the content of the laws or rules that was steering, administrating and operating the companies. It is our mother law of companies act. Also the memorandum of association and articles of association is the company's fundamental rules that means interaction between the shareholders and the directors and how the operate it's everything is written within the memorandum articles and also you have the law the money laundering act and provision acts the tourism act is the criminal activities such as money laundering and insider dealing is that is contains within this law and also the for the listed companies or listed entities they have to follow the security exchange rules a stock exchange risk and regulation or also is the bound for compliance the corporate governance code latest in the third june 2018 it's released it. the securities and exchange commission of bangladesh is corporate governance code must be followed by the 
listed entities. So also the BRPD circular number 11 dated 27th October 2013 is issued by the Bangladesh Bank for the corporate governance for guidance for the banks, only for the banks. If we see this BRPD circular here to form the board, audit committee, risk management committee, executive committee, what we will see within the organization, what would be the role, what is the role of the CEO or MD, everything is within this guidelines for the bank. So we can say that it is the corporate governance for the companies here. So if you see the ethics, law and corporate governance are all interrelated. Ethics are values, we know it, and principle that society expect companies and individuals to follow and law are rules that the legislator have determined that companies and individuals must follow. The law is a system of rules that society or government develop in order to deal with crime agreements and social relationships. You can also use the law to refer to the people who work in the system. And corporate governments requirement may be viewed as additional rules and guidance for companies and individuals. They bridge the gap between what the law requires and what society expects. Oh, they bridge the gap between what the law requires and the society expect. So if you see the relationship between law, governance, social responsibility, and ethics, we can say that law is the mandatory rules. This minimum level of behavior society allows is the law have to follow it and corporate governance is the bindings for the publicly listed companies so publicly listed companies only are regulated through the corporate governance or corporate governance code and others are encouraged to follow the best practice to see law and corporate governance is the more regulation less freedom of choice that means have to follow it. The sun. More regulation, less freedom of choice. So here's tightened. Have to follow. No choice. Okay. But social responsibility and ethics. So what is social responsibility? Social responsibility is a no regulation. Individuals and companies have a free choice some social pressure to act in a social responsibility manner but it has no regulation and ethics values and principles individuals and companies are expected to follow adopting an ethical position is down to free choice so social responsibility and ethics are less regulation more freedom of choice that means look here Law and corporate governance is more regulated, have to follow it, less freedom of choice. Okay, that is no choice. And social responsibility, you have the choice, less regulated. It's not rules. Relationship between laws and corporate governance, social responsibility, and ethics, I think it is clear to you here. Development of corporate governance internationally. So previously we have seen uh, development of corporate governance in Bangladesh and corporate governance code and latest code it, uh, released by our Securities and Exchange Commission in the year uh, 2018. Every listed company should follow it. Now the development corporate governance internationally, that is UK, Europe, South Africa and USA as for your syllabus. So if we see here, the development of corporate governance in UK, United Kingdom, the three significant governed committee from there, Cadbury, Greenville, and Hampton. So were commissioned during 19 in response to the increase 
meet for good corporate governments in the light of civil corporate scandal. In there, the committee from it. If we see here that it is the development stage and a consequence of uh, the development of UK corporate governance. Look here, three committees. One is Cadbury Committee, 1992 is the best practice. And then Greenberry Committee, 1995, director's remuneration included there. And Hampel Committee is the best practice. Combining there, 19, combined code release the UK. Combined code release in 1998 in the UK. The principle of good governance and the code of best practice. And later on, it included in 1999, the Trumbull Committee, internal control and risk management included within the corporate governance. Next, 2003, non-executive director include and then 2003 again through the Smith report, audit committees are included here. And then combined court on corporate governance revised in 2008. Year after year, corporate governance within the UK. So if we see here the basic thing, Cadbury report, 1992. What was the focus? Focus was the board of directors. And outcomes, chairman and CEO role should be split. Previously, CEO and chairman, the same person. But after this Cadbury report, split it. Chairman and MD or CEO would be separate persons. And chairman is the independent necessary. Okay. And institutional investors need for greater dialogue, audit and accountability, good communication and disclose. And from part of the stock exchange listing rules, comply, either comply or explain. It is the summary of capital reports. And then Greenberry report 1995 included the focus on directors remuneration because directors are working for board meetings giving their times the need remuneration therefore they are valuable expending time so included the directors remuneration in 1995 what was the outcome the balance between salary and performance okay and then Hamwell Report 1998 deal with the criticism of previous report. That means Cadbury and Green Valley, the Lufon find it and deal with the consolidation in the combined court. And then again, 1999, need for directors to review internal control system and report on them. So included the internal control system should be report, should be review. So internal control system of the organization should be reviewed by the board of directors included in 1999. So what was the outcome? Outcome is framework for establishing system of internal control. That is ICC, what we are saying at this moment. I'm also the head of ICC of of Rooney Bank Limited, as a state owned banks. So then 2003 focus on role of non executive directors. What was the outcomes? Specific guidelines regarding their role. And 2003 again comes here recruitment and development of non executive directors. Is come again another additional guidelines in the Smith report 2003. We have seen that the focus was auditors and audit committee of the board. So, outcome was relationship between auditors and the company and the role of the audit committee. Then, again, 2010, Sir David Walker and the FRC 
complete review of the corporate governance following the financial crisis 2008 and 9 and comes the code was found to be fit for the purpose and the name changes the uk corporate governance code as like bangladesh previously it was the corporate governance guidelines but 2018 is the corporate governance code mandatory have to follow the listed companies so if you want to study more go to your study material and page number 427 there is more things there and but i think that it is the summary it will be helpful to you for understanding for writing okay report that influence corporate governance guidelines in uk it was the cadbury report 1992 Greenberry report 95, Ampel report 98, and the 99 and 2005, and also 2003. All uh, the 2003 also and 2003 also last Smith report is the provided guidance on non-executive directors (NED). That means non-executive directors. The expanded gun pool of needs required. Okay. and diversity of background experience enhance board reduction of reciprocal arrangement stakeholders on the board improve understanding of shareholder issue and then come the finally the uk corporate governance code so the uk corporate governance code formally known as the combined code set out the standard of good practice for listed companies on board composition and development remuneration shareholders relation accountability and audit the code of the code is published by the financial reporting council okay in uk you also in our country we have also the financial reporting council they are working So, if our CEO of UK to publish the UK corporate governance code, so if we see the history of UK corporate governance code, 1992 Cadbury report, 95 Greenberry report, 98 Ampel report, this way comes 2010 UK corporate governance code. And this uh, look, this is the history of the UK corporate governance code. Okay. So on 17 September 14, they first they published an updated version of the UK corporate governance code, as announced in the press release. They first they update the UK corporate governance code. The revised code was published to accounting practice, accounting periods, beginning on the 1st October 2014. So it's for UK. Now come the Euro. The European Commission has taken the view that corporate governance matters should be left as the matter of individual states to deal with, and was the subject of the announcement in 2003. So European Union or European so European Commission think that. countries code of corporate governance would be decided by the country of itself so commission did to recognize that the common approach was necessary for fundamental issues such as directors remuneration disclosure and access to financial information and the management of the independent non executive director it would be the developed a series of directories is a basis for all state to follow so if we see here in the multiple corporate governs reform process in europe it is the reference here if we see the front then operation of the board in 1995 and it is the venture report this count to second report the separation power of the chairman and the ceo and disclosure of the executive remuneration 
1999 and established then review findings again governs of the enterprise 1988 to 2004 is the board report it is for the france and for the italy the report principles of current administration 1999 and then Breed report, code of conduct up to 2004. And Spain, the Oliver report, code of ethics, 1919. Then the Elderman report, the transparency and security of the market, 2003, and corporate governance principle, international best practice, released in 2004 in Spain. And then if you see the Denmark, they use the UK, UK combined report and then comes to the, the Nervous Commission report recommendation as a supplementary of existing law 2001. And then finally, they also use the OECD principles of corporate governance. And the final, after reviewing, it's come corporate governance report in Denmark. Okay. And then if you see the Germany report, the recommendation that reflect changes in corporate laws and there is come to the common code regulation and then if you see the australia australian code of corporate governance framework on shareholder board transparency and auditing released in 2002 and switzerland swiss code of best practice recommendation in 2002 and sweden sweden code of best practice Report of the code groups 2002 in corporate governance code of practice 2004 Netherlands does corporate governance code principle and best practice provision 2003 and European Union European common modernizing company laws and enhancing corporate governance 2003 and Belgium if you see here Belgian code of corporate governance the principles of support long-term value creation in release 2004. So in the October 2004, the EU corporate governance firm was established with 15 members representing various stakeholders from across the European Union with the objective of corporate governance between all member states the European Union and if you see South Africa the King third report principle of good look here the King third report in South Africa principles of good governance are not only regulated in terms of legislation and the common law implementation contains in the code of best practice the King Second report on corporate governance 2002 thereafter was applicable to South Africa enterprise. So in view then to present the New Companies Act 2008 in Africa, it becomes necessary to draft a new King report on corporate governance. That's why King's third committee considered the 11 M board and directors accounting and auditing risk management internal audit integrated sustainability report compliance and stakeholders relationship business rescue fundamental and effective transactions it governance alternative dispute resolution and editing the king report third the revised code and report on the governance principles for South Africa. Okay, is on 1st September 2009. The chapter of King Third are ethical leadership and corporate citizenships, boards and directors, audit committees, the governance of rigs, the governance of information technology, compliance with laws, rules, codes, and standards, internal audit, governing stakeholders' relationships, integrated reporting and disclosure.
the key third report deals with the more or less the same issue as deal with the king second report sapura prika data protection and information regulation act requiring that times complies generally electronic communication and transaction act promotion of access to information act regulation of interruption and communication act protection of personal information ppi and public sector national archive and record service of is act public finance management act pfma promotion of administrative justice act others the constitution of rsa 1996 national credit act financial intelligence central act fica and king star report so corporate governance is regulated in south africa most of the companies that had corporate governance fill you see the south african corporate governance uh, with companies look here here the business division group companies corporate vice president their corporate governance department is working within the here also internal control committee corporate strategy committee csr committee representative of directors president here board of directors nine directors to executive directors as per the rules here and they always monitor accounting auditor board of directors audit committee and finally comes to the general meeting of the shareholder and they are subsequently they adopt the financial account and also board are reviewing everything internal control and meeting of shareholder the right establish of the stakeholders shareholders now if you see the development of corporate governance in usa united state of america so the united state of america a struggle with corporate governance framework the us corporate governance is made of multiple factors legal securities and accounting rules designated to protect the interest of the shareholders in transparent means so in usa it has two wings one is state corporate laws and other federal corporate laws so us corporate governance system is the best understood as the fiduciary and managerial responsibilities that bars a company's management shareholders and the board within a large society context and by legal regulatory competitive economic democratic ethical and other social factors so now us corporate governance act is and it would be followed by the other countries so corporate governance rules in us have developed from relatively little of the complex serban axley act in 2002 so if you see here that corporate governance main fundamental basic things are communication board of directors and committee basic things are board of directors and committee legal and statutory communication business practice and ethics disclosure and transparency risks and performance management continuous monitoring so if serban serban saxley act of 2002 that three main drives for that were why it's come action management increasing shareholders activism from institutional investors and in particular fund managers broad the action and behavior of the senior corporate management to the public's attention this was deriving in part of the increasingly protective practices of directors is in taken over with some investors through went against their best interest so 
Arthur Anderson and the Walcom scandal. So if we see here, it is the uh, is the act development of corporate governance in USA. It is the extract only a year in the year various year 1977 the foreign corruption practices as uh, release and then is develop the provide the specific provision for regarding establishment maintenance and review of system of internal controls and 1979 UCTX Securities Exchange Commission prescribed mandatory reporting of internal financial control and 1985 Judiciary Commission need for putting the place of proper control environment, establishing disability constitution independent the boards and the committee and objective internal audit function. And 1992, Gosso issued internal control integrated framework. The committee of so issued internal control integrated framework. It is a framework to help business and other entities assess the enhance their internal control system. And 2002, Oxley Act. The act makes fundamental change in virtually every aspect of corporate governance, in general and auditor's independence, conflict of interest, Corporate responsibilities, enhanced financial disclosures, Server Oxley Act in 2002. Major element was the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board established, auditor independence established, corporate responsibility, enhanced financial disclosure, analysis conflict, commission resource and authority studied in the reporting corporate and criminal fraud accountability white collar crime penalty enhancement corporate tax return corporate fraud accountability it is the major element of servant oxley act of 2002 so andrew arthur anderson and welcome scandal lead to calm the Servant Oxley Act 2002 and also close up relation between auditors and client. Okay, it's come also that at law, yeah, public company accounting oversight board comes was created that this act and was given the role of policing auditors. All auditors of public companies must be registered and comply with the strict rules on ethics and audit procedure. So in our country, our financial reporting council that we first established and they start work in the future, all of our auditors should should take license from the FRC and the FRC would be the whole agency for regulated accountant, auditors, and financial reporting and auditing also. Okay, so if you see that general meeting of the shareholder, board of directors come here, it is the two part, supervisory part and operational part. Operational part, fully management related. A supervisory part, the board related. So operation part, if you see within the organization, this is the internal audit department, internal audit would be the audit chief internal audit officer would be here and also the chief RICS officer here and RICS management committee within the management and internal control committee would be the management also IT environment committee would be within the management they work together and supervised by the board for, for example internal audit it is the supervised by the audit committee risk management it is supervised by the risk management committee others could be the executive committees of the board and both of the supreme supervisor here they all committees with the report to the board okay us companies are governed by a variety of legal regimes 
relating the corporate governance matter. This consists of a state law and federal statutory rules, that means two things, and regulation of the various governance agencies, including rules issued by the US Securities Exchange Commission and self regulated organizations such as a stock exchange that impose requirement of the companies whose securities are listed and trade on SaaS exchange in our country it is the uh, dark stock exchange and Chitang stock exchange also in addition of those sorts of law the u.s corporate governance regime derives principle from a variety of non-legal source so it is the history of that means stage of corporate governance development in USA. So here fundamental thing is that corporate governance in USA, there are two sides. One is state corporate laws and it is federal corporate laws. And the latest, it is regulated by the Serbian Act 2002 and established here the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board under this act. It's for today. So what today we discussed, we discussed the interaction of corporate governance, ethics and the laws. And the development of corporate governance internationally, we hear senior only UK, Europe, South Africa, and USA. So it's for today. We will meet inshallah again. Till then, take care. Allah Hafiz.